I'm Wendy Akomalafe Kalu. I lead the storytelling team. We handle brand comms um, and content creation for Flutterwave. And Zainab is our vertical lead in the growth team, and her focus is on small, medium businesses. So our speaker today, as you, you guys probably already know, if this is the first time you're joining us, welcome. But for everyone else, our speaker today is Laji Iran. She's the CCO of Laji Iran Publishing. She used to be a journalist with a top Nigerian newspaper. And then now she is a full-time author, speaker, and also she's a filmmaker. She has published um, five books. She also trains authors. So not only does she uh, publish and write books, she has also tr trained authors. She has a YouTube channel and she has released um, a few books, one of the books, what, sorry, a few movies. Um, one of the films got over 14,000 views within the first week. She has been writing creatively for over two decades now. So you guys know that you're in good hands. She has built a large following for herself on social media and off social media as well. And her blog is lajuiran.com. Um, so we're gonna be, she's gonna be speaking to us today about building a create an audience for your creative material. So whether you're a photographer, a videographer, a content creator, a writer, a even a blogger, like whatever you're doing, um, Laju is going to tell you how to reach the right people that are interested in your content, number one, but also that really like your content and will pay for your content. Because it's one thing for you to be chasing your passion on a full-time basis or even on a part-time basis. How do you make money off it? How do you get some you know, money off it? Um, so she's going to be speaking to us about that. Uh, so this is the agenda for the day. Like I said, I've done the quick introductions and the house rules. We know our speaker, we know our host, and we also know um, what our topic is. So we're going to go into Laju's session now. Um, and then after I go over the house rules, and then we'll go into the Flutterwave session, and then we'll go into our Q&A session. So the webinar is being recorded, as you probably can see. All our webinars are recorded and we upload this as a free resource for you to grow your business on our YouTube channel. It will be available exclusively to you guys that joined this, this morning. Um, we'll send the link via email. It will be as available exclusively to you for like a week. And then after that, it will be made public and available to everybody on our YouTube. So when you receive the email, you can just click on the link to watch the video but if you want to see all the other webinars that we've done in the past just go on our youtube type in flutter wave and then click go on our grow my business webinar playlist you see all the other webinars that we've done this is the 16th one that we're doing and we do it every week we've missed maybe one or two because of public holidays and stuff but we are here every monday morning so all, all those resources are available we've spoken to people from and experts from South Africa, from Ghana, from Kenya, um, people that have grown their small businesses. We've also spoken to real life flutter wave merchants that have successfully grown businesses. Uh, we've been speaking to them and Laju Iren is actually one of them. So she'll be speaking to us from a from first hand perspective, number one, how to build and create an audience for your creative material, but also her experience using flutter wave. Um, in addition to that, you can ask your questions in the Q&A section. Um, that's where we're going to be addressing all questions when we're doing the Q&A session. But if you want to relate with other speakers and you want to respond to speakers, because like when we joined, I said, if you could hear me, please, if you could hear, please indicate in the chat function. Many of you use the chat function already. Um, so you can use that to relate to attendees and to, speak to, to respond to our speakers' requests. Um, and then if you have any issues or if we cannot get to your question, you can email hi at flutterwavego.com or send a direct message to us on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, on Twitter, our support page is at FLW support. And then on Instagram, our handle is the flutterwave. It's also, our main handle is also the flutterwave on Twitter. So if you want to follow us to keep up to date with us, to see when we're doing more webinars, more events, all the amazing resources that we have for businesses, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. So, Ladri is on. Hi, Ladri. Good morning. Hi, Yolande. 
I we can't see you. <laughs> yeah, I just put on. I I sent you a message that I'm having issues accessing um the internet with my laptop where my slides are. Oh dear. So oh. I may need a few more minutes. Sincerest apologies about that. It just started acting up. I made some updates overnight. So would you I like? I need a few more. Minutes. Do you want to send it to me and then I can I can um, actually present it and then okay you... I think that works let me do that let me do that right to me okay but the thing is my laptop is not connecting to the internet oh dear so okay so I'm what... trying to send it to the phone via Bluetooth just what... keep telling us about what that way for like five minutes <laughs> what we'll do is and then. Zainab session, Zainab will go in through, into your session first and then we'll okay. come back to larger session. Yeah, so yeah, okay, is on our side, but we're going to make it work. So yeah. yeah, we are. You look good, Yoandi. Thank you. Zainab looks good too. And hello, everyone online. Mm -hmm. Apologies. I'll be back shortly. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so let me quickly just go into the Flutter Wave presentation all right so i'm going to do it a little bit different this time around um i think we would watch a short video first and then i will go into the presentation let me share my screen my name is short Jim, video and i'm a product designer at Flutterwave. i want to walk you through what we've been building for the past couple of days welcome to my dashboard. I'm going to walk us through two processes. The first process is how to set up your store and add products to the store. The second process will be how your customers will pay you and use your store. So I'm going to click on the store. Um, by default, you have no products or store. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my own store now. My business name is my store name by default. I'm going to go and change mine to something else. I'm going to go with drinks and let's see, fun. You will notice that I updated my store URL to reflect my store name. I am going to leave my store offline because I want to add products to my store before I take it live. I have successfully created my store. I now have my store name and my store URL. My URL is what I'm going to share with my customers for them to be able to make payments. You can only have one store on your Flutterweb account. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add just one product. It's good to know that you can have more than one product. I'm going to go ahead and call this Tiger Nut Milk. Tiger Nut Milk goes for about 1,000 naira right now. Milk that's made from Tiger Nut. I'm just going to go with 0.28. And I have 10 items in stock. Next step is to take my store online. Now my store is online. I am going to proceed to the customer page, which is basically your storefront. As you can see here, drinks and fun as the name of my store, floater with store demo is the name of my account we have here the description of my store um, as you can see tiger nut milk i'm going to go ahead and add two bottles of tiger nut milk click on pay i'm going to go ahead and refill this Now we have a lot of payment options. You can give your customers a lot of payment options. Okay, so um, the video we just watched is um, a short video showing us what um, 
what we've um, set up for business owners. It's called the Flutterwave Store. If we haven't heard about it, I know, you know practically everyone here has heard about it. But if you've not heard about the Flutterwave Store, then it's um, simply the best and easiest way for business owners to launch and manage their e-commerce business. And it allows you to receive payments from both local and international customers. Um, with Flutterwave Store, businesses are able to list their products, upload images, um, set prices, and even have um, delivery partners pick up and deliver your order. So just think about Flutterwave Store as your own mini website. That's really what the Flutterwave Store is about. It's a must have for every business owner. Um, the idea of Flutterwave Store came about um, because of the pandemic that we found ourselves in, um, where everybody had to be in a lockdown situation. So businesses had to shut down. A lot of us had to um, stay at home to remain safe. And then we found out that a lot of SMEs suffered because of this pandemic, because none of them, well, most of them did not have an online presence. They just had their physical locations, you know, brick and mortar stores where customers walk into to buy um, their products. But because there was a lockdown, people couldn't move around. A lot of these businesses suffered because they could not make sales. You know, if your, if your shop is shut down, then nobody's walking in to buy, right? But with the advent of the Flutter Wave store, businesses were still able to keep the lights on because you are more or less taking your business online. So instead of customers physically walking into locations to transact with you, all they need to do is go to your Flutterwave store URL, you know, put that in the browser and they're able to see everything that they would have ordinarily seen if they walked into your physical location. So the idea was just a very simple and easy to use platform for SMEs, small business owners, not just SMEs, really any business owner to take their business online. So that's why um, Flutterwave came up with the Flutterwave store. But the um, store is relevant even after, you know, the pandemic is finally um, resolved because you still need to ensure that your store is online. The truth is customer behavior is beginning to change. And we can see that um, even now that um, there has been the lifting of the lockdown, right? Stores are still able to open partially. But the truth is most customers would rather not physically go to um, a clothing store, for example, or even a restaurant, if they can order online and it's delivered to them in a timely manner, they would rather pick that option because people are still being careful. So the truth is this um, online business, online um, display of goods and services is actually here to stay because um, consumer behavior has changed. So you have to ensure that your business changes along with um, what your, your what your consumers are um, preferring now. So with the Flutterwave store, like I said earlier, you're able to take your store online. It's very simple. It's very seamless. It's very quick to set up. Like we saw in the video, um, Ted was able to set up his store in literally five minutes and he was able to also receive payments right after setting up the store. So for every business owner, it's a must have. It allows you um, list products, services, um, everything that you sell. Assuming you have um, a wig shop, for example, and you have um, wigs ranging from 20,000 to hundreds of thousands, all you need to do is take pictures of those wigs, put them on the Flutterwave store, put the prices, um, put the delivery options available, and then go ahead and share your store link with your customers, right? So this actually helps you as a business owner. I know most business owners today sell on social media, so Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. But the truth is for every sale to be concluded, if you're selling on social media, there has to be an interaction, right? And if probably you don't respond on time, it's possible you might lose that sale. So today, most what most um, business owners are comfortable with is selling on social media. So you put your products, you put the pricing and all that, and then people still have to contact you, right? Sometimes you tell them DM for price, which is a, a bit frustrating for the person that just wants to buy an item and move on. So they send you a DM, they have to wait for you to respond and they get back to you. That whole long process is quickly shortened if you're on Flutterwave store because there's no need to, uh, for DM for price anymore. All your prices are listed, the products are there, the sizes, all descriptions about what you need is there. So if the customer wants to buy, all they need to do is click on that item, add it to their cart and then pay. And then you as the business owner, you get notified 
of that successful payment. So the notification comes with details of the transaction, details like the customer name, phone number, email address, delivery address, all those details are there. So you can actually just go ahead and send um, those products to the customer without that, you know, back and forth iteration of, oh, send me a DM for price. You now have to wait for the person to respond, um, you know, and then you ask a couple of questions and then at the end of the day, what you get is, I will get back to you. So all of that is um, eliminated with the First Wave store. Um, like I said, think of it as your own mini website. You don't need to build a website, um, which is one of the um, limiting factors most business owners would say, oh, I don't, you know, maybe I don't have the funds to start building a website, or I don't have that time to start managing, you know, products on the website. So with the First Wave store, um, you don't need to have a website. You just upload your products, put in the descriptions, like I said, and it's also very good because it helps you with your inventory management. What that basically means is if you have lots and lots of items um, for sale um, and you don't have an inventory management system, what that means is anyone that wants to buy an item, you have to now go and check to confirm that you have that quantity available. So maybe you sell shoes, for example. Someone wants to buy um, 20 pairs. You're not sure you have up to 20. You have to go and check, maybe count to confirm that that number is available before the sale happens. But with Flutterwave store, at the point of setting up your store, you're able to put in um, the number of items available. So if you put in 100 pairs of shoes, for example, and then people are buying those shoes, as they're buying, the number is depleted. So obviously, once the item is completely sold out, no other um, purchase would be able to happen. So it just shows there that the item is sold out. So that helps you with your inventory management. It also notifies you when you're getting low on stock. So for example, you have 100 items, people are buying it every day. When it gets to maybe 10, five, you get a notification, they're getting low on stock. So you can either decide to get more items or just you know, be on the lookout for people that want to buy large numbers. So like, um, like we saw in the video, it also provides you with multiple payment options. Um, so a lot of people would say, oh, I'm a card person. I like to pay with card. Some will say I'm not comfortable putting my card details online. I'd rather just do a transfer. Whatever option you prefer, um, the Flutter Wave store provides that payment option for you. So for those that are already used to oh, send me an account number, let me do a transfer. That option is available. So once you um, remember the page that we saw on the video, once you click on... Um, pay with bank transfer, an account number is displayed, and then you just do a transfer, the business owner would still get the notification that a transaction has happened. So all that um, DMA for price is um, completely eliminated. So this is just a screen grab to show, um, we already saw this in the video, to show the kind of information that is captured from um, the customer making a payment. So for every sale, you're able to get details about your customer. The beauty about this is you can now do like a follow-up right um, to your customers. Think about you have just a brick and mortar store. Someone comes into your shop, the person buys, and then the person pays and leaves. That's really probably the end of that transaction because you don't know anything about that customer. You don't know the customer's name. You probably don't know the customer's phone number. It's just a sale that has happened and it has gone. But with Flutterwave store, you can see you have details about each person buying from you. So you get the person's name, email address, phone number, delivery address, location, state. This helps you uh, make informed decisions about your business. So for example, if you notice that you have so many people buying um, from uh, a certain state, say, um, or your state, for example, you know, that might be, you know, an indication that maybe there's something happening in your state. You might want to do maybe a flash sales or something within that environment. Uh, if you notice that someone buys maybe 10 pairs of red shoes, right, um, and then you have a new stock of red shoes coming in, you can easily just send an email to the customer that bought those shoes saying, oh, I noticed you bought, you know, you like the color red, you bought 10 pairs the last time. Guess what? We have new stock. So that's um, interaction with your customer that you wouldn't normally have. Have. The Wave store allows you to have that interaction with your customer. So it gives you that data. And say data is what the new oil, right? It gives you that data that you can now use to get more sales from your customers. So that's, um, and this is just a snapshot of what sort of um, receipts that you get as the business owner. So the business owner gets a receipt. The person making the payment also gets an electronic receipt sent to them. And so you're able to track every single payment that has happened. So the Flutterwave store is an initiative put together by 
Flutter Wave to help business owners scale. Um, a couple of other initiatives we put together is this webinar, um, which happens, like you already said, every Monday by 10 a.m. It's called the Grow My Business webinar, where we have um, different speakers from different um, industries come to talk to um, business owners about the sort of tools, information um, that they need to scale their business. And also we have a partnership with Google. Um, I think it's very important to mention because now that everyone is online, it's very important for your business to have online presence and visibility. So we've partnered with Google to help um, create that visibility for all Flutterwave account holders. So you don't need to do anything out of the ordinary um, to be on this um, partnership. The partnership entails free listing of all business owners on Google My Business. So Google My Business is a platform that allows um, visibility of your business whenever a Google search is done. So how it works is, for example, if I type in um, hair sellers in Lekki and you as a customer who sells hair have been registered on Google My Business, your business name and company profile will be among the first um, set of businesses that will be displayed when that Google search is done. So it's very important and the beauty about it is it's absolutely free. Um, like I said, we've partnered with Google to provide this service to all business owners for, for free. So um, these are just some of the initiatives we've put together. Um, the Google My Business free listing, take advantage of it. Um, to take advantage, there's going to be an email that would share, I think, by close of business tomorrow or Wednesday, which is going to contain a recap of this um, webinar. And also it will have a link for you to opt in to be on the free listing of Google My Business. So all you need to do is click on that link, put in your details, and then a Google um, representative will contact you to put you through on the listing on Google My Business. Um, I also talked about the webinar that we have every Monday by 10 a.m. Very important. If you know any business owner, please feel free to let them know about the webinar. It's absolutely free as well. And would we'll also be sharing um, the recap of the webinar via email as well. And then the most important one for us to have the Flutterwave store. Any business owner at all needs to be on the Flutterwave store. There's so many things we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks, which I believe you should all take advantage of. So we have um, various partnerships coming up. I'm sure some of us that watch um, BB um, Ninja would have seen um, there's been a lot of engagement on Flutterwave store um, on that as well. So um, there's a whole lot of other um, benefits for Flutterwave store owners. We're going to be doing a publicity, creating awareness for all Flutterwave store um, account holders. So please take advantage of all these amazing initiatives which Flutterwave has put together for small and medium business owners. Um, so that's it from me. I will stop sharing my screen now and let Laju take it from here. Thank you very much, Zina, Bani, Wendy, and everybody else online for your patience. I'm very grateful for that. First of all, thank you so much for having me on board today. Um, every time I receive an email, I always see a lot of professionals coming um, on this platform to share their story, and I'm honored that you consider me to be one of them. Um, I'm very, very passionate about using Flutterway for my business because what I do is I sell books, um, among other things. And I remember using a particular platform that made it so difficult to sell because, first of all, for every sale, we had to find a way to transport it to... Um, I, I want to be careful about the words I use. I don't, it's like you don't know the brand. But for every sale, we had to be careful to transport it somewhere. And there were additional costs that came with transporting one book that came with packaging that one. So every time I received a sale on that platform, my heart would sink because of the stress and the additional cost that came with that kind of purchase. So when Fata Wave opened up, I was really, really grateful that I, I remain very, very grateful. The charges are low, your customer service is great, your platform is awesome. So thank you for having me on your platform and for giving me the opportunity to host this. So my name is Laju Eren, and today I'll be talking about building an audience creative material. I have of thank you slides. Oh, this is my welcome to class slide. It was during the course of this meeting I realized I'm wearing the same hair. And so maybe you guys think I don't have another hair. 
<laughs> so next time when I come on board, I'm going to wear like five different hairs. But well, thank you, Flutter Wave. These are just some of Flutter Wave guys came to my house for something to see your related. Um, and we're friends now, I guess. So this is a little bit about me. I'm a best-selling author, I'm a book writing coach, and I'm a filmmaker. I'm so many other things, but these are the, the, the things that constitute the business side of me. So I thought to share that. Um, I'm going to be talking to you for the next 20 minutes, like I said, about building an audience for your creative material. I was speaking um, recently to a friend, founder of Okada Books, Okichuko Fili, and he said something that really stuck with me. He said writers, and I'm a writer, of course, and he's a writer. He said writers are very, very good with the typewriter, but very, very bad with the calculator. And that's why this topic is very, very important to me, because not just writers, a lot of people who are involved in the industry, maybe not music per se, because I think now there's a business of music that everybody really loves and that works. But a lot of people who maybe write or make movies or maybe even music, a lot of people who make arts are very, very good with their jobs when it comes to the creative aspect of it. But not many of us are comfortable with the business side of it. Not many of us are comfortable with selling and pricing and that business angle. We just want to make stuff. But if you've been a creative for a while, you realize if the money angle, sorry, I wish I could see the charts. Let me, is there a way to see the charts? Sorry. If, if you're a witness to what I'm saying, just say uh-huh, uh-huh in the comments so that I can know I'm not alone in this. But for a lot of us creatives anyway, so if, if you agree with me, please let me know in the comments while I carry on. For a lot of us, we like what we do. But, okay, good. I can see a lot of chats. Good. Let me see. How do I? I can't see. Ah, oh, me and Zoom. You guys will catch me now. Okay, I think I found the way. Oh, yes. Okay. Someone said, my dear, you're not alone. Very good. I think I'll just put the chat here so I can get your response as I go on. So we like to create. We like to write. We like to make stuff. But selling is not very easy. But I was saying that if you're going to consistently create your heart content, something has to pay the bills. If you're going to get to the point where you can continue doing what you love every day, reaching people, changing people's lives, your content, entertaining them, there has to be a source of income. If not, you'll never really be able to focus, right, on the thing that you really love to do. And so I feel like as creators, we need to talk about the numbers. And that's why I, I, I'm really very, very grateful about this, um, about this training. So I'm going to just share a few thoughts with you. Um, I'm also stuck for 20 minutes. I, 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 I don't really know how to teach for 20 minutes, but I'm going to try. Um, I'm going to try <laughs> so that you can enjoy the rest of your morning. I'm just going to share a few thoughts with you. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is that as a creator, you need to create. One major part of my business is that I'm a book writing coach. And so I train people basically how to write their books. I have people who have been struggling to write books for three years and then I help them finish it in two weeks. Just now. So that's what I do. A lot of times when clients come to me, they keep on talking about the fact that, oh, what if nobody wants to buy my book? What if, what if, what if? And they've, never, they've not really taken time to create anything. And so we must start from this point, create. Because what attracts an audience to you is first of all, what you put out there. If you're very, very good at stuff and you don't put it out there, nobody's going to know. So you need to create, you need to settle down, tell your story, write that book, make that film. I actively became a filmmaker this year. Um, we currently left set for my second movie. But the truth is what I call my first movie it's not even really my first movie. My first movie is something I shot on my phone in film school that I'm never, ever going to show anybody <laughs> because the quality wasn't so great. But by creating it, I learned a lot of lessons. And then I was able to create something else that I could then share with my audience. So many times, you have to start from doing what you love, making that painting, making that piece of art, and um, writing that, making that short film, making that... that music you have to start from creating because what is going to attract the audience that you need to you is going to be the content first and foremost and so you have to focus on your core and do what just create the next thing i'm going to talk about is you need to connect and business owners do this a lot they have this no like and trust and process you will rarely see a business that just wakes up one day and then without connecting with anybody, especially if it's a small business, start selling. But creators do it a lot. You've been on Instagram for a long time. We've been following you. You've never 
never showed us your work at all. And then one day you just wake up and say, come and buy my music. Come and buy my... <laughs> I think I think um, sharing the recording will be up to um, will be up to the Flutter Wave team, so that will be up to them. I, I'm not I'm not recording myself, so to be up to them. Um, someone asking a question about recording. So yeah. we're, we're So many times. We... Okay, thank you, Yolande. So yes, Flutter Wave will share the recording if you can carry on. So many times we have creatives who just haven't taken out time to connect with their audience and then just start selling immediately get us to know you, get us to like you, and get us to trust you. It's the reason I just up for this meeting. I'm not looking for a husband. I've been married by those six years. This is the sixth year. But I dressed up because I feel like if I dress up, you guys will take me more seriously. If I give a big smile, I want to connect with you because I probably have prospective clients in the audience. And so you need to get to the point where you are interested about connecting with people, about sharing sharing those stories that you are particular about you need to get to the point where so for example if you run a blog for moms you can't be in isolation there are so many instagram pages and blogs for moms you want to show up there especially at the beginning of your business even towards the end you want to keep showing up you want to be there for people now i'm not really my dms when I first started my journey as a full-time author, I would take out a lot of time answering people's questions in my DM. Do you understand? You want to get you want to you want to be that listening ear. You want to connect with people on the basis of your content. I'm going to explain that um, going forward. But get us to know you, get us to like you, get us to trust you. There are some people who you've been sharing wisdom nuggets all your life, sharing beautiful, um, sharing beautiful content. Oh yeah, like they never followed you. They don't really care about what you, what you have to say. But the day they see a picture of you and your kids, I'm not saying you should use your kids to sell. Or the day they see you um in a TikTok video, their heart softens towards you, because people may not always have the same idea in common with you. But if you can connect based on emotions and based on shared experiences, you'd be surprised that you have an audience there. So you want to connect. When, when I think many of us worry about the fact that we don't have a large audience, but we don't really focus on the audience that we do have. I have another slide about that. So I'm going to talk about that going forward. Anyway, connect. The next thing I'm going to talk about is that you hone your skill. Like, you need to hone your skill. You can't be... You can't be a, okay, let me give you an example. So when I launched my first book, my first book as a full-time author, it was my second book in 2017, someone messaged me and they said they wanted to help me um, write my books. First of all, like there are things you can help me do, but writing is not one of them because I enjoy it. Do you understand? But they said, I want to help you write your books. And I did respond to that message. They <laughs> wrote, um, they wrote A and M instead of I apostrophe M. And so this is somebody who wants to write for me, edit for me, but you don't know the reason I'm saying I am and am. So many times I might buy from you, I might follow you because I like you, like we went to school together, our friends. But if I'm going to consistently follow you, if I'm going to be that person who purchases everything you sell, if I'm going to be that person who keeps showing up for your content, you have to be good at what you do. You have to be good at what you do. You guys know, almost everybody here has a family member who does a particular kind of business. And the last time you invested in that business was, ah, the person is my blood, let it not be as safe. But you can't keep buying every time because of let it not be as safe. So you need to do better. Some of us are really good at what we do already, and that's amazing. But you need to keep improving constantly. I think one of my biggest spending Spending budget this year has been on self-development. Like, I'm constantly taking courses. I was telling my main list a while back of how my husband said, you need to buy stuff for yourself. You're always paying for courses. <laughs> but you need to do better. You need to do better because we're not going to get in an age where um, what you learned during your first degree is going to sustain you. The fact that you went to music school five years ago. You need to keep improving. And you need to let it show that you're constantly improving. You need to hone your skill. You need to do better. So you can't keep doing the same work you were doing three years ago or two years ago or even four years ago or even four months ago. Of course, your style might be the same, 
But let's see improvements. You need to have a constant, consistent um, commitment to improving your skill, to doing better. That's so important. And that's something that business people understand a lot. But I think for creatives, because you don't see what you do as a business, many of us don't understand how important it is to invest in ourselves and invest in developing our skills. Here, yes, so this is very, very important. Appreciate your community. See, eh? everybody has people. It's just that some of you, your people are 10. Some of you, your people are 10,000. But if you would learn to appreciate the 10, 50 people you have who buy your work, who keep showing up for your content, what do I answer your question towards the end? If you learn to appreciate the 10, 50 people who buy your work, who keep showing up for your content, something is going to happen. Let me give you an example. So one of my best-selling books is a yellow book called Dating Intelligently. And so when the book first came out, um, the first set of people who received the book, who received the book at that time were my church members. And I was like, you guys, please just take a picture of you with your book and share it on social media for me. I may have said, oh, many people bought the book actually. But I may have said, many people have no bought or it's just, you know how some of you say, it's just my family members that bought. It's just my church members that bought. It's just my, um, it's just my, I had, I had a client who said, it's just my mom's friends that bought. And I said, well, among those, your mom's friends, there are people who may be high ranking people in society. There are people who may just have like, apart from being your mom's friend, they have other titles. And I said, if you would appreciate those people, if you would get reviews from those guys. So the truth is, when I first started my business, of course, I didn't used to charge everybody. Like, there's something, there's some trainings I did, I did for free. Now, I don't train people for free. But there's some trainings, okay, maybe I did once in a very blue moon. But there's some trainings I did for free. I didn't collect a dime. But guess what? The money I've made from the reviews of those free trainings. So I could have a friend, and a friend would say, Lord, I need your help with my writing. And I'll give them access to a course. And, they, and I, they wouldn't, I wouldn't charge them because they're friends. Or I would see a friend struggling with a particular book, and I know this book can sell better. And I would message him and say, let me help you. Let me push this for you. And I wouldn't collect a dime. But I would get a review. And I would, the way I would tell the review, people would never know that this person, I did it pro bono for this person. Because I would, uh, maybe I called a friend to say, let's do this about your book. Let's do this, this, and this about your book. When I'm talking about that friend, I'm talking about them as a client. And I'm saying, in a session, this client said this. I'm going to tell you about 10 stories about your story. But in the meantime, appreciate your community. Don't feel like, if anybody posts about my work, you can have two followers. I'm going to comment. Because it's my job to get my work out there. You see, eh? you, it's not YouTube's job to promote your videos for you. I hope you understand. It's not YouTube job because they will promote videos that already have many views because they've seen that those ones have potential. It's not a book retailer's job to sell your book for you. It's not. It's not Deezer's job to promote your music. And I love Flutterwave. And I, I love the fact that they've helped me promote, promote my business a lot. But it's not their primary assignment to push me. They are interested in pushing me, but guess what? They have so many other clients as well. So before you worry about this person is not talking about my products, how well are you talking about your product? How well are you talking about your product? How well are you appreciating the people who show up for you? So like I would like some of you guys came to my house, I would talk about them all oh, because I know that the more I talk about them, the more they are going to talk about me. Do you understand? So Someone's asking, yes, they do the integrated delivery. They have a question about integrated delivery one day. Hey, what happened to my screen? We'll, oh, no. Don't worry, okay. we'll, get to the, we'll get to the questions when we're doing the Q&A session. We'll get to okay, all the great. questions. So yeah. let, let me continue then. So appreciate your community. That's so important. Somebody talks about your work, blow it up. Don't just say thank you and walk away. Like I was telling you guys, hey, when that book dating intelligently first came out, people would, it was my church members I first started talking about it. But the way I blew it up, even people that I didn't ask to talk about the book, now started talking about it. Why? Because 
other people were talking about it. But if I never asked anybody, please take a picture with your book and talk about it, nobody would. But because I went out of my way to say, please talk about my book, it created a ripple effect so that even people that I didn't ask to talk about the book started talking about the book. So appreciate your community. They may not be a million, they may not be 500,000, but love up on them, like be great about them. Another thing is like, own your stuff. Own your stuff. People will call you what you call yourself. People will call your work what you call it. You need to own your stuff. So if you, if you look at one of my first books, for example, sorry, I'm using my work a lot because that's, that's like the case study I can use um, easily. If you look at my first book, Self is Bible Girls, every time you Google it, you're going to see a phrase before Self is Bible Girls. They're going to see the critically acclaimed Self is Bible Girls. Do you know why the critically acclaimed Self is Bible Girls is? Because I started calling it the critically acclaimed Self is Bible Girls. Of course, it's critically acclaimed. It had a lot of reviews. But until I began to call it that, people were not really calling it that. If you've ever written a book and you put together an about you're going to realize that every time somebody talks about your book, they are going to use the same about the book article that you used. People are going to call you what you call yourself. I'm not saying you should call yourself a person that nobody has called it. That would just be really weird. But there will be some stories about your story. I'm not the only person author I know. I've been a person author on a number of platforms a number of times. But guess what? It was not a consistent part of my bio until I made it a consistent part of my bio. So you need to own your stuff. I remember one time looking at myself and saying, ah, I've only sold maybe like 7K books in three years. And then I saw a guy that had sold 1,000 books. 1,000. And he was doing sponsored ads that he sold 1,000 books. You need to see. You need to understand the role that perspective plays in all these things. You need to own your stuff. Because people are going to call you what you call yourself. People are going to call you what you call yourself. And that's something you need to understand, that the, the, the responsibility for your personal brand lies with you. This one I'm going to talk about, share free content. Share free content. So um, one thing I use the Flutterwave store for, which I really love, is that I use it to collect payments, or the Flutterwave platform, rather. I sell books on the fiscal store, and then I use the um, payment platform to collect payments for my courses and so one thing i do for example is i have a sponsored ad that always gives people a free training with that free when they sign up for that free training eventually we follow up and then they get the link to the flutterwave store to pay for a paid training but imagine if i just got people's email addresses from somewhere and i began to send them bulk emails and tell them to pay for my course they are first of all going to hate me and they are not going to pay that's, that's what I want you to understand. But you see, this thing here, sharing free content. We will not pay for your work if we've not seen bits of it for free. I always tell writers, people will not pay to read from you if they've not read for, for me for free. Especially if you're not backed up by a big publishing house. So if I see a book by Lantern Books or by Zondervan, the name of the publishing house already tells me it was going to be a great book, even though I don't know the author. But if I see a self-published book by you, there has to be something that makes me want to buy your book. There has to be something that makes me say, do you know what? I'm going to go on YouTube and I'm going to watch your full video. You need to show us clips of your work for free. I'm not saying you should give everything out for free. Someone DM'd me a while back that he was, not even a while back, last week, that he was a graphic artist. And so I said, hmm, before I even respond to this DM, let me check his page to see the work that he has done. Guess what? Nothing. There was no, there was no single thing about his work on his page. Nothing about his work on his page. So you want to share free content. And I said later that there should be a correlation between your free content and your present or future paid content. So for example, if I know that two months from now or a month from now, I'm going to release a book about so-and-so, Sometimes even three months from now, I start talking about it. I start talking about it in bits. People are going to follow me because they like my perspective on this particular topic. That way, when I sell something that is 
based on the content, they are going to buy it. So let's assume when the yesterday you started talking about food, you talk about all the different dishes you know how to make, you're creative, you like cooking. And so in January, February, March, all your IG posts, everything you sent to your mailing list was all about food. And then in April, you released a book about engineering. And you're like, but I have an audience. Why is nobody buying? Because we don't know you for that stuff. So you want to release paid content in line with content that we know you for. You might be good at engineering, but we've not heard you talk about it. We're not following you because you're interested in it. We're, we're, we're more interested in engineering. We're following you because we like the way you talk about food. If you had released a cooking book, it would have probably sold more. So you want there to be a correlation between your free content and your future paid content. The truth is, if you go on my edge page, I talk about everything. I talk about the things that are most important to me that may not be directly related to my business. But you see that business, I talk about it. I haven't launched a book in over a year. But books I launched three years ago, I still talk about them every week. You need to show up for your creative content like you are showing up for a business. Like you are going to work every single day. That's so important. Another thing sharing free content can do for you is it can help you build your mailing list. So you, you want to share free content, but you don't just want to share it blindly. You want there to be an end game to your free content. So make, let's say you're a musician, for example, and you have, I don't know, an EP is like a single production, right? But you have an album in the works. And, like, and you're like, do you know what? In fact, just click the link in my bio and you can download my new song. So I click the link in your bio and they tell me, oh, wow, you're almost there. Put in your email address and you're going to get my new song. As so I put in my email address because I really want to see the song. And then you send me a follow-up, oh, thank you. This is the new song. I hope you like it. Don't forget to share. If you share, tag me. I'll be sure to repost, blah, 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 blah. The next email, you tell us a story about how you wrote that song. That email, you tell us, do you know what? My album is going to be coming out soon. And since you got the free song, I'm giving you my album at a discount. So you move from free to paid. You most likely sell more than somebody who just comes on IG and says, buy my album. Do you understand? Okay, cool. Share the content. I can't find my chat again. Oh, where are the chats? I want to be seeing you guys talking. Oh, great. Okay, someone says I like that. Oh, beautiful. I'm happy. I'm happy about that. Let me move. Let me move and then continue. So, feedback and reviews. Feedback and reviews are so important. So, like I told you, even when you give people, like, even when you give people, like, free content, even when maybe you, you hold a training, and I think trainings are great because like coaching, the coaching um, market is really, really large. And even though we have a lot of coaches today, it's not really fully tapped as tapped as, tapped as it should be. Feedback and reviews. I'll give you an example. Um, now, a major part of my business is like coach writers, right? Well, I did start out as a writing coach. I worked as a journalist for about five years and then I resigned to become a full-time author and speaker. In fact, not even author, blogger, and speaker. And I thought I was going to be making money from being a blogger. But then I realized that the more I blogged, remember free content, the blogging was for free. The more I blogged, the more I realized that people really love to read my work. And so I followed up from the content that they loved from me as a blogger and became an author. Feedback, feedback first, became an author. And then people began to say, oh, well, I like the way you write. And I like the way your book came out. And I'm struggling with finishing my book. And so from that, I evolved into becoming a writing coach. I brought out all my mass communication training, um, first degree masters. I brought out my five years experience as a journalist. I brought, out, I brought that out. And then I now became a writing coach. So feedback helps you know the aspects of your business and your gift that you can monetize. Yeah, there's not everything I do that I monetize. There's some things that I do that are well, volunteer work, some things that I do that I mean, I'm a pastor's wife. There are some aspects of my life that I say, oh, I don't do this for free. So what feedback does for you is it helps you know what aspects of your life and what aspects of your creative geniuses or your creative juices that will be business for you 
and that you can just easily do as a favor. It helps you know, okay, well, for this, it's volunteer work, and for this, it's business. And the truth is, creatives need that. Creatives, you need it. <laughs> I know I'm not lying. I know I'm not lying. Because for you, your friends just say, ah, you're a dancer now. Come and dance. Come and dance. Come and dance. They forget that if you had invested, if you had invested those hours you are coming to dance for them for free, you would have made some money. But it's part of you that still wants to do this because you enjoy doing it or you want to change people's lives. So you need to figure out what aspects of your creative juices will be for business, what aspects will be volunteer work, right? All right, let me move on. Reviews. Yes, reviews are very, very important. So I said even when you do stuff for free for people, get reviews. Get reviews. This one is so important. Get quality reviews. Get quality reviews and share them. And share them. Someone says they call him for free. You work there. When he gets to paid stuff, they call someone else. I'm going to talk about that if I have a few more minutes. I think you need to have some sense of structure. Sometimes when people ask me something, there are some people that I can never charge for anything in this life. That one is, is a given. There are some people I can never charge for anything in this life. So I know who those people are in my heart of hearts. Do you understand? But there are some other things where, where there are some other situations where because of the way you position yourself, it becomes difficult for people to ask you for something for free. Uh, let me just mention, one of those areas is advertising. Advertising. If I advertise a free training, and in that free training, I sell a paid course, it becomes difficult for you to come and meet me to ask me to give you that for free because you thought I invested money in advertising. So I package myself as a what? As a business. I think the reason why they keep calling somebody else for paid stuff is because you've not learned to own it. Is there a link to booking a session with you on Flutterwave where you say, okay, well, you want to work with me, book a session. Sorry, I have some numbers book in my house. Where you want to work with me, book a session that connects. Do you understand? So sometimes the reason why people do that to you is because you don't have structure. Structure. But let me go back to this. Tell me stories about your story. What I tell authors is that there are two stories you need to tell. There's one story you tell at once. You write your book. You make your film. You tell it at once. But there's a second story you need to keep telling over and over and over again. You want to be, can, I, can I know how many more minutes I have so that I can try around enough? I, I, this, I'm enjoying uh, this. Too. I think we can do um, another five to ten minutes. Okay, great. Okay, let me work with 10 minutes. So, there are two stories you need to tell. You, you, tell, you, tell, you write your book, you write it once. You make your film, you make it once. But you see those stories about your story. You need to keep telling them over and over and over again. You need to tell the behind the scenes aspects. You need to tell the in front of the scenes aspects. You need to bring out the reviews. You need to tell them your why. Tell them your how. So, see, the truth is, eh, if you're going to really build an audience, especially a paying audience from your creative material, you can't talk about it once. You can't talk about it twice. You need to talk about it over and over and over again so that anybody who knows will talk about your work. They're going to take a cue from you about your work. If you talk about your work once, Twice, they never talk about it. But if you are consistently talking about it, they are going to follow your lead. You need to tell stories about your story. You cannot just make something and go and see who is to sell it. Who? If you are an author, it cannot be the bookstore. The bookstores can try. But guess what? You have one or two. They said my net of unstable. Why isn't anybody? Sorry, one more. Somebody is knocking on me. Thank you. So what I saying? What you have a primary responsibility to tell stories about your story. Books that are selling 200, 300, 400 titles. YouTube has millions of people putting out content. Why should they promote yours when you are not promoting it? <laughs> so consistency is very important. Creativity is also very important. You are creative, right? So create stories about your story. Perspective. Let me think about this. And I realized that for book sales, what worked for me, especially in the early years, was going to events that had topics related to my book. 
And so sometimes I'll go to an event, I'll be giving a stall. Okay, thank you. Go and tell them to please give you breakfast. Thank you. Just go to them. Sorry. Yes. Going to events and stuff like that. And there are sometimes I will go to an event and I will rent a car by also driving there. I will carry my heavy books to the event and I will not sell one book. And guess what? Nobody will hear about it on social media that I didn't sell one book. I'll talk about how awesome the event was, how glad I was to be there, how I went with copies of my book. No word about how many copies I sold. The next week, I'll go to another event. <laughs> I would maybe tell them, okay, please give me more copies of my book so they can announce it, maybe partner with the event planners. And I would go with maybe 40 copies of, it, of that book. Then I had one red book that I was selling at 5,500 then, just one, um, one major red book. And I would go maybe with 40 copies. And I remember one time I went with 40 copies and I sold all of them. And do you know what I said on social media? I said, you won't believe it. I sold out. I didn't tell them I sold. And 40 copies was big money. 40 copies and 5K, not too bad. But the perspective was I sold out. I sold all the books I went with. I sold out. Do you know what I said? I, that was the perspective. So people men are like, oh my God, so this girl just carries, they don't know how many books I carry. And I did not lie. But in their mind, they formed the perspective that, oh my God, this girl is really selling out all her books. She sold out all the books she went with. And she did. If I had gone with 10 books and I sold out, guess what I would have said? Tell me in the comments what I would have said. I sold out. Because people will buy based on <laughs> how well they think other people are buying. I'm not saying you should lie, but sometimes you need to take it from a different perspective. You need to take it from a different perspective. I remember calling a friend of mine, she had just put a book, book on Akala Books. And so, like, on Akala Books, there's a way you can, sorry, I talk about Akala Books a lot, I'm sorry. When I love a brand, I talk about them a lot. But there's a way you can, you can know how many people have purchased a particular book, right? And so she just put her book up, nobody had bought it, and it was showing zero sales. And she munched it and shared it on social media. And I messaged her, I said, why will you carry your book with zero sales and put it on social media for us to see that nobody has bought it? What kind of thing is that? <laughs> I said, there are so many other things that you could have done. You do a flyer. You, you, there are so many other things you could have done. Don't put your book zero. Even if it's zero, must the whole world know. <laughs> So perspective is very important. And then, of course, I'll talk about the five W's and H. It's something I learned um, in, in, in journalism school about... Um, it's something I learned in journalism school about um, telling stories. The who... So usually, if you read a news article, usually the five W's and H are within the first and second paragraph. And so you have the who... So who are you? Let me, let me use, let me use that, that to help you tell stories about who are you. Do you understand? What? What do you do? Why? Why do you do what you do? How? Give us the behind the scenes look. You will never see me wake up one morning and say, for the first time in my life, I've written a book, come and buy it. So there is the price. When I've not talked about it before, never. In fact, once I'm 75% done, I'll start talking about it. I'll show you me typing on my laptop, carrying my kids. I'll show you me, my dressing robe with paper surrounding me. You have to know the backstory. So when the book comes out, it's not just that you have a book. It's now our what? Our book. So how? Do you understand? Who, what, when, where? Where can I get it? Where can I get it? The link to my Fatal Wave store is on. Let me show you. See, this is the packaging I use for my books. You will see my Fatal Wave link here. Fatalwave.com Fatal forward slash shop forward slash Nigerian.com. Is in my bio because some of you are selling stuff. People don't know where to get it. I have a musician I love. Up till today, I don't know where to get his music. Sometimes I'll go on YouTube, some songs will be there, some will not be there. Just put it in one place for us. Let's know where. Let me move on. I'm running out of time. Experiment. Try out different things. We always believe in experimenting on a small scale first. But sometimes you have to go big. Sometimes you have to go big, experiment. And then sometimes you need to experiment with expert advice. So like the person who introduced me to the story of the first wave platform, for example, is my business, my business consultant, Adjoke. Like even for her, I may not even be here today. So sometimes you need to just 
as the expert. Sometimes you need to pay the experts <laughs> when you're experimenting, especially what experiment, experiment, try all different things. You know how you take initiative for that job that I pay 50k. I was a journalist. I worked. I worked for a newspaper. They pay me 52k, and they used to pay every so like in May they'll be paying you maybe February salary. But I used to take initiative on that job. I would say you should do this way. How about you begin to do that for your creative material? That that effort you are putting into your work, I admire it. But put it into the things that you also love to do. Experiment, try out new ideas, main business. Like I said, you may need to separate parts of your business that are uh, business parts that are ministry parts. Are, because for creative work, it's not always clear cut. It's not always clear cut. So maybe you're a gospel musician, for example, you can say, okay, well, for churches, you're going to need to pay for this and this. But I decided that I'm going to be training people on how to play the keyboard. And I don't train people to play the keyboard for free. I can minister for free at your church. You can work my youth for free. But I don't train people. People don't take my online course. I don't know how to play the keyboard. I'm just speaking hypothetically. People don't take my online course for learning the keyboard for free. That's the business side. So like me, I don't train writers for free. That's the business. I don't review books for free. That's the business side. There are things I do for free. Okay, I have some free trainings, but like one-on-one -on -one coaching, I don't do it for free. So you need to know, you need to have those boundaries. You need to have those boundaries. I'm not saying you should not make yourself so hated that even all your friends that were there to support you at the beginning, you no longer, you no longer care about them. But you need to have some sort of boundaries. Mean business. Meaning business requires like, it means that you're doing market research. You're finding out what works, what doesn't work. Yeah, it's not every book. So like me, I, I know that there are some books I will write. There are some topics I'll write a book about. And even though I have like an audience that loves me, I won't say. Because it's not it's not a topic that works for me or works for my audience at this point in time. Market research. Creatives don't do research. They don't. They always invest money in something and expect people to buy it without researching. It's bad. Build anticipation. Stop surprising us with your work. Tell us in bits and pieces. Do you know, I, was, I always use this example about how, hey, God, I think I'm actually out of time. I'll round off now. But I'll just share this example about how I knew that Blacklist season, is it five or six, was coming out on May, May 17th on Netflix. Do you know why? Because they had been telling us since February that it was coming out. And these are people who already have a market of millions of people. You, 2K followers, you just don't be surprising people with your work. Build anticipation. Have an advertising budget. Those people that say your friends don't call you for jobs, but they haven't seen you do it as a business. So if they, if you, if you have an advertising budget, they're commonly seeing your digital ads. You'll be like, hmm. So it's actually official. Have a brand. Father Wave has already given you an option when it comes to websites. Do you understand? But if you can still have your own website, that's also good. So have a personal brand. Follow someone like my friends with the Michaels, learn about personal branding. Do excellent work. Please do excellent work. People are not going to follow your work because of the lessons they are learning from it. They are not. They're not going to read your book because, oh my God, so many lessons. It's the way you are saying it. You are staying in this training, you are learning a lot, but you're also enjoying the way I'm saying it. So that packaging is important. Mean business, sell. What are you selling? You need to have clear cut products. Clear cut. You need to settle down with yourself and say, okay, this is a product. I'm selling one on one sessions. I'm selling this training. People don't have to DM you. They can go to Photo Wave and say, okay, this is what this person is selling. You need to sell. Sell. Because if you do all the moves and you don't sell, if you do all the moves and you don't show up to sell, and you don't put the price tag on, you have to sell everything for your creative material. But you need to have clear cut products. You need to learn pricing. Creatives need to take business courses. You want to also make it easier for your customers and to put away something. Because I'm not the kind of person that can keep up with my DM. Sincerely, I'm very, very bad at it. My DM is full as I'm talking to you. And every time I say, in fact, I'm going to respond to everything now. Oh, and I have more messages, so sometimes it's really frustrating. But guess what? I have a photo wave store. So it makes it easier for my customers to buy. It makes it easier for my customers to buy from me because I have a store. If someone is discussing you in the, with, with, with you in the DM about purchasing a product from you, maybe a piece of art or a painting, you might not say, ah, ah, 50K. 
Why can't you do 20k? Not say, ah, you know now. Is this a... But if there is a link to your bio that says this thing is 50k, you will be like, ha. Because they, they can't go to shop right and price. You understand? They'll just pay. Or, you know, some people, they will still not pay. They will still come and beg you. But at least they know what your price is without you being emotionally invested. And then, you know how sometimes people have priced something in the DM. And you're like, ah, you have already spent the money in your mind. You already know what you're going to use the money for. <laughs> That's your not happy. <laughs> but really, I think the following store kind of like bypasses that. And then you want to have good customer relations. Be kind to people. I think one of my favorite phrases I use is, thank you for buying my book. Thank you for taking my course. Thank you for watching my movie. Thank you for taking my training. Thank you. Customer relations. Um, this is about stories. This slide is not supposed to be here. Just ignore that. You can walk with me. You can get my book at Fatawistore slash Lagerian.com. I also have a free training, which is a good starter guide if you want to um, write a book. If you want to write a book, I don't train writers in the DM, so you can sign up for my free training here. You can get my books here. Um, Oh my God, it seems like we're almost done. I just feel like I still have a lot to say when I can remember it all. But thank you very, very much for having me. Um, please, another thing I think the Photo Restore does for you before I round off is that it helps you keep your database. Your Instagram page is not a database. There are people who are more followers than you and you combined who have lost their pages. But what Photo Restore does for you is that it helps you have like the email addresses, the phone numbers of your clients. And so you can even reach them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. That was something that the platform I used to use before Flutterwave didn't have. And so it's really, really amazing that you can actually do that without the original heartbreak of GM for price. And you can have your email addresses in one place. You can have even their home addresses in case you want to go pay them a visit. <laughs> and then another thing is that you can also collect, someone so much might say, well, I don't run a business, but for so the movies i make right i make them on a volunteer basis i don't make money from movies at least not yet so like the last film i made was crowdfunded largely crowdfunded and we took a lot of the payments on the flutter store so that's also like if you take donations or you do crowdfunding that's also like a very very good opportunity right there um i think that's all thank you you can access the free training okay just um, how can I, let me put this, I'll find the link to the free training and put it here. But in the meantime, I want to take questions. Yeah, take so we questions. have a few questions for let you me, okay. and for Zainab as well. Okay, great. So I think we, awesome. will, we will kind of, I will, I will just post the question section and we'll toggle between you and Zainab. Um, thank you very okay, much, Raju. This was very helpful. Thank I don't you. know if you've seen the comments, but Someone has said, I'm awesome, lots of value. Thank you, Laju. Thanks, for the wave. Um, they, someone said, thank you, Laju. You are amazing with four Oh, you guys are so awesome. <laughs> you guys are so You are saying that you're superb. You're amazing. So we're going to go into the questions Aww. now. And um, as you guys know already, we're recording this. So you don't have to, like, you can always go back. Someone said, Laju, you are such a vibe. So I hope. <laughs> I hope that all these, you can, all these comments, I think it was amazing as well. So um, let me go straight into the questions. Um, uh, someone is asking, can the Flutterwave store be used for intangible products like services? Um, Zainab, would you like to answer this yes. question? Okay, so the answer is yes. Um, you can use it for intangibles. I'll give an example. Um, there's a lady that organizes like a paint um, session. Um, I think every two Saturdays or so. So she uses the Flutterwave store to collect payment. So that's really like an intangible because you're not actually buying anything, right? You should, you're paying for um, to attend the online painting uh, session. So yes, you can use it for intangibles. It doesn't have to be products only. You can also use it for... Um, services you know such as trainings and stuff like that so yeah the answer is yes just think about what it is you're offering are they paying you for it if the answer is yes then you can be on flutter wave store yeah another thing is that um flutter waves flutter wave web okay there's actually a question that is asking what is flutter wave so i'll actually answer that question and then i will okay. talk i'll kind of tie it into zainab's answer so flutter wave is a payments technology company 
What that means is that everything that has to do with payments, we're able to offer it. So we help businesses to receive payments. We help banks. We help, help individuals to receive payments. If you're a creative that is trying to sell your content, we are able to help you with that. We created Flutterwave Store as a solution for small, medium businesses to get online as a result of the pandemic, right? But it may not be the solution for you. We do have payment solutions for every single stage of your business growth. So if you offer a service that needs to be very tailored and customized and specific, we have something called payment links that may work for you. Another thing that we have is invoicing as well. You can generate an invoice on your Flutterwave dashboard, send it to your customers, and then they can pay you from wherever they are in the world. So if you are a creative and you have done um, a voiceover for somebody, um, for a video or an ad or something like that, and you want to send them an invoice so they can pay you. Your client is in South Africa and you are based in Ghana and you want to receive your payment. What you need to do is send them an invoice, which they will now be able to click on a link and make a payment to you. What we do is basically facilitate easy payments. We simplify payments for businesses, for individuals, and for banks. That's what we do. And so while Flutterwave store is a great solution for many businesses we also want you to know that there are other options available if you have more questions you can dm us send us a message on on um, social media uh email us and we'll be able to tell you some of the some things may not be su may be more suited to you so you can i just want to clarify that as well so um i'm going to go to the next question um this question i think is for laju I'm a website developer. I started a website hosting businesses, hosting a website hosting business. Most times my clients are not from my location. With that in mind, I had to run a package where I create websites for clients outside my location, but I still am not able to develop trust. So how will you advise me to create trust? Because I can't have offices in all the states in Nigeria. Yeah, I think that that's a beautiful question. One easy way to create trust is reviews. Um, get people to talk about your work. Have a link to your portfolio online so they can see the things that you have done without even discussing with you. And then, so that there are subtle ways, you understand, to throw in people that you work with. So, for example, um, let me give you an, let me give you an example. I I one of the things I do I do is ghostwriting. I decided like maybe two or three books a year because it's like a premium service. And the last book I, I just wrote was for a former minister. So when you're ghostwriting, it's, it's discreet because you don't want to have your name on it. You don't want to have your name like saying, oh, I'm. I'm not sure if this is just me, but I think we've lost Ladger. Yeah, I think so. She seems um, frozen. Laju, you're frozen. I don't know if you can hear us. So we're gonna. So she's gonna come back to. We're gonna come back to this question because obviously she's not done answering this question. I'm um, gonna go to another Flutterwave question. Um, for everyone asking, yes, we're definitely. Um, we have a. We we are recording this. We're gonna send it by email. Um, okay. Next question is: How does the integrated delivery service system delivery system work? Zina, would you like to answer that, please? Okay, so how it works is for customers today that don't have um, the logistics partners to help them with their needs, so you can um, provide one in the sense that we have integrated with delivery partners. So at the point of checkout, you just select uh, rather the person paying you would just the item you deliver to and then there's um, a back-end calculation that would now determine how much um, that would cost so that will be displayed on the screen um, so for example if you use um, the system 
system that the army now calculate and display a delivery of say one thousand five hundred. If it's ten thousand naira, um, the customer will end up paying ten thousand naira plus one thousand five hundred, which is eleven thousand five hundred. Now that is how the integrated delivery fee works. However, if you are a business owner who already has logistics partners that they use and they're comfortable with, then all you need to do at the point of setup is just put in fixed fees or fixed charges, right? So an example would be you can say um, all Lagos Island locations, 1,000 Naira, or all Lagos mainland locations, 1,500, or you can just say Lagos, 1,000 Naira, outside of 3,000 Naira. You know, you can just put in flat fees like that because you already know how much your own delivery company will charge you. So in that case, um, the customer will be paying for the goods and the delivery. When you get notification, please contact your own delivery partner to deliver. So that's basically how it is. It's not compulsory for everyone to use it. It's just there as an option. And then um, you can just select that if you want to go with it. Okay, thank you. Laju, Hello? back. Hi, Laju. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, my, my network just went off. No worries. Again. All right, so I was saying a great way to um to views. Let's see the work you've done for other people. Talk about it. Sometimes in subtle ways, sometimes in not so subtle ways, like the example I was giving you. You can also offer free services, but you want it to be services that will not much from you and that don't give everything away. So if you, like, if I, if I give you a free training, you already know, oh, I have the ability to teach you this. Do you understand? Or if I tell you, um, download a free website template, and then I told you don't know the free website template, you now you now join my mailing list. And you said the template actually works. You might be more open to um getting me to work on your website. Not me, I don't know, I don't know anything about websites. But just let's know, let's see who you've done work for. And then sometimes you may also have um fail safe options. Some people use options like if you don't if you don't get your value for money, you can maybe get a refund or get to and so percent back. That might also work. But the truth is, people do businesses with people online all the time. So don't let that limit you. If from the very beginning of the conversation, you are showing them work that you've done, it's going to be easier for them to trust you. Um, and then you can even get like video testimonials of people who you've worked with. Show them using the website that you worked, you worked with them. But don't, it, it can't limit you at all. I promise you. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, next question is... Um, oh, this is a statement for Laju. Uh, okay. Says, Thank you. You're a wonderful and passionate presenter. I joined uh -huh. in late, but I have enjoyed this little bit. Thank you again. So, um, next question is, this is for Zaina. If Flutterwave allows for only one store and I offer two services that are not related, how do I go about that? Okay, so for now, um, you can only set up one plus of wave store. Account she set up a sub account, um, under your main account, and then that sub account can have a plus of wave store account. So that's how you can go about it. I'm sorry, I'm, just, I'm not a person, sorry, but I wanted to add to So that can also work. Oh, Zina, am I right? Very correct. Okay. <laughs> Very correct, okay. yeah. Okay, um, sorry, I tapped out for like one second. Um, Someone is asking, can they sell their artwork on Flutterwave's store? Yes, if it's physical artwork, 100% yes. But also, if it's digital artwork, yes, you still can. You can use Flutterwave's store or you can use um, payment links um, and then have a redirect URL so people can download your artwork. So the picture that you use for your display would obviously probably be watermarked so that people don't steal the art. And then... Um, you can, yeah, it's something that you can definitely do. If you need more assistance, you can send us a message. We'll be able to help you. 
Um, Ladri, this is for you. How can one sustain captured audience followers that have not bought any, any of one's products or services? So how do you sustain your audience? Well, yes. well the truth is that not everybody will buy from you. That's why I, I, I believe in doing work that you're passionate about. Um, I'm not saying that passion should be the only thing, but I'm doing work that you're passionate about. So that even if people don't buy from you, or even if people are not among the parts of your audience that buy from you, right? You can teach them stuff to keep offering value. Of course, there has to be a difference between what is paid value and what is free value. But if you offer value constantly for free, in line with the kind of value that you sell eventually you're going to make money from it if you do it right so don't don't like don't now be angry i think what some people do is they'll say i remember um wanted to stock my book with a particular book retailer years ago and i went to her page to find out what she was about and she was like are we fighting for the past, for the past long you guys have not bought books from me and there and then i made up my mind that i wasn't going to sell with her because she wasn't selling and she told her that she wasn't selling <laughs> so i feel like you need to be consistent and don't take everything too personal. You also need to invest in ads. Facebook ads will radically change your business. I think sometimes you just assume that, oh, if people around you don't buy from you, then there's no, like how many billion people in the world? So sometimes you may need to put in a budget for advertising and you'll be able to reach more people if you do that. So sometimes it may not even be your core audience that will buy from you. I've learned that a lot this year. Sometimes it just be people who, um, I've been exposed to your work through advertising, through the reviews. So don't give that buy from you. Don't do that. And then sharing more free content actually helps you build your audience even more. And the more you build your audience, the more you um, give more room to have people who are paying audience. But don't don't be like those people who say you are not following me back. I'm going to block you. Or don't don't be petty. I think I think that's. <laughs> Yeah, um, so thank you for that. I agree, don't be petty, especially to the people that you want to spend money on your, on your product. Um, so we're going to take one more question because mm. we're, we're quite a bit over time. Um, I have sent the link to that Laju's, um, to the link, so the link for Laju's free training, lajuiren.com forward slash free BW training sign up. I've sent that into the chat function so you can check that. Um, but um i think we're pretty much done with oh wow i've seen two questions now okay uh someone says i want to sell home automation services it's basically a service oriented platform where people can automate their lives okay um this is something that you can do on flutterwave store but if you share if you share more information or if you give us more information, we'll be able to tell you exactly how to do it. If you have a website already, it may just be a situation where you integrate our payment gateway and then um, sell that way instead of necessarily using Flutterwave store. But if you send us more information, we can definitely help you. Um, okay, so Laju, this last, this last question is for you. Mm. I saw something before online and no one bought. I kept quiet about it, but I don't know if that was okay. Was it? Well, you can find out you know, not by doing a post, but DM the people in your target market and ask them that dog that you sold. Is it something Quite get discouraged. And the truth is, what creators do is they, they try selling something and it doesn't sell. They keep quiet about it because they don't want people to know that they are not selling. But nobody knows your numbers but you. And the moment you keep quiet about it, everybody now knows, oh, it was unsuccessful. So I feel like sometimes you need to, it may be your strategy. There's some things that for some reason just don't work and you can try out other things. There's some things I used to sell before that I don't really sell anymore. Do you understand? But the truth is that you need to experiment. You need to be bold. And then sometimes you need to ask yourself, am I really giving this thing everything it takes? Because sometimes it might be the product. Maybe you didn't do enough market research. 
sometimes it might be your strategy and sometimes it might be that you just needed a little more consistency so you want to go back and do your research and ask and then observe the people who do who maybe sell similar products what do they do differently do you understand if they have a book you can get it if they have training sessions but you can simply observe them if you can't pay for their session so don't be in a hurry to give up i'm not saying never give up there are some aspects of your creative <laughs> there's some aspects of your creative genius that may not be scalable or may not be scalable for you or may not be a long-term business um, thing for you but you wouldn't know until you try and you try your best and then you just keep exploring trying and testing stuff out thank you very much Lajir. um so this is in, yeah. this has been really helpful i'm just going to read out someone's comments to um to the person who said that he people don't trust him because he he cannot basically have an office in every state mm -hmm. this person says that you should invest in having at least one flagship client for this from the states that you're targeting that way okay. when a client comes from a specific state he can you can mention the business that i already working with in that location and probably show the potential client the testimony from that person um this person is also in web design and so it has been working for him so make sure your flagship client is relatively popular but even if they are not make sure that you get a testimony from them we have officially come to the end of our webinar Yay! <laughs> thank you so much everyone for joining us um we will be I, like i said we're we record we're recording this Laju's link, I'm sharing it again. I'm copying it and I'm pasting it in the chat function for everyone to see so that you can for have we free training sign up. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you, Laju. This was really great, really impactful. Thank you. I had thank a lot you. of fun. Very insightful. Yes, very insightful. And I think that our, our audience obviously thinks it's fantastic as well. Thank you, Zainab, as well. This was really great. If you have any questions, please email us. We are high at flutterwavego.com.